Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Recently, we saw the first patient being treated with an ADA skid disease, Strymvelin. Emily Kalm Seema, working in the Gene Therapy Rare Diseases Unit at GSK, company behind Strymvelin, is here with us today. So Emily, tell me about GSK's history and its involvement in gene therapy. Yeah, fantastic. Well, GSK in the Rare Diseases Unit has had quite a long history in cell and gene therapy, actually. We have enjoyed a fantastic collaboration with the scientists and clinicians at the Telethon Institute for Gene Therapy since 2010, so that's about seven years now. And we signed this deal with them to look at bringing transformative medicines forwards for patients suffering from rare life-threatening diseases. Our collaboration focuses on ex vivo gene therapy which involves taking cells from a patient and then using a modified viral vector to deliver a copy of a gene to those cells and then delivering those cells back to the patient to be able to have a long-term transformative effect in that disease. Under the collaboration with the Telethon Institute for Gene Therapy, we are looking at seven of these life-threatening rare diseases. The first of these diseases is a disease called adenosine deaminase severe combined immunodeficiency or otherwise known as ADA skid and we actually now have a marketing approval in the EU for an ex vivo gene therapy for this disease and we were granted this in 2016. We have another two medicines coming through in late stage clinical development under this collaboration with TJET and these are for metachromatic leukodystrophy and for Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, also rare diseases. And we have other programs coming through from this partnership. So GSK is quite involved in drug development for rare diseases. And you know, with rare diseases, there's less patients around the world and there's quite a high risk. So what's the justification of GSK's huge, uh, heavy involvement in, in therapeutics against rare diseases? Yes, that's a great question. GSK is heavily committed to rare diseases. We see the rare disease space as very, very important since there are now over 7,000 known rare diseases affecting patients and these patients have no real alternative therapies available for them. So we have a real commitment to deliver therapies for these patients. But we also see the rare disease space as a great opportunity to be able to develop a new platform, which is gene therapy. Since in the rare disease space, often quite a lot is known about the genetic cause of the disease, this means that it's a fantastic opportunity to use gene therapy to deliver the missing gene to treat that disease. Um, in GSK, we want to build the platform for cell and gene therapy and first enable us to bring forward treatments for rare diseases, but hopefully in the future, bring forward treatments for common diseases too, as we learn more and more about how we deliver these therapies. You mentioned a couple of diseases, including ADA skid. Of the 7,000 or so rare diseases, how do you select the diseases that you want to develop programs for? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. It's very, very important that when we start with gene therapy, we have a really good understanding of the mechanism of action of disease and understand what we are trying to deliver with, with the gene therapy intervention. When we started our collaboration with the Telethon Institute for Gene Therapy, there were a number of programs that they had done some fantastic early discovery and clinical work in, including ADA SCID, MLD and WAS because these were diseases that were well understood in terms of the genetic cause of the disease. And so from that collaboration, this enabled us to choose these as our you know, lead pipeline and, and develop them forwards for patients. You mentioned collaboration quite a few times, and obviously collaboration is key to drug development these days, and it looks like it is to the rare disease unit at GSK as well. 
What do you look for in potential collaborators or co-development partners uh, before you make the decision to invest or, or decide to work together with them? At GSK, we believe that the collaborative model in cell and gene therapy is absolutely key. And in the rare diseases unit, this is especially the case. When you are able to collaborate with external parties such as the Telethon Institute for Gene Therapy, you can access that core science and clinical understanding and development and bring that together with what pharma knows how to do best, which is manufacturing, regulatory work, logistical work and commercialisation ultimately. But having that collaborative relationship to bring forward development is really, really key in making sure you're making the best decisions for the programmes and bringing the best medicines forward for patients as well. What's GSK's current strategy for gene therapy against rare diseases? So GSK's current strategy for gene therapy and rare diseases is building on our collaboration with the Telethon Institute for Gene Therapy. And so we've got seven programmes under that collaboration. But GSK's strategy in cell and gene therapy also extends beyond just the rare diseases unit. We also have a collaboration with our immuno-oncology teams together with a company called Adapt Immune. And we're also working with a company called Milteni in our cell and gene therapy platform groups. So we're sort of collaborating in a number of different ways to see if we can build a platform, build capabilities and learn in immuno-oncology and rare disease indications how to do cell and gene therapy so that we can bring it forwards for other indications in the future. And what should we expect to see from, from the cell and gene therapy unit within GSK in the next five to ten years? In the next five to ten years we'll be looking to bring forward our programs that are currently in late stage development indeed and bring these forward onto the market and enable more access to more patients to these gene therapies but we're looking to understand where we need to grow as well and how we capitalize on what we've learnt looking at ex vivo gene therapy and move that forward and develop the platform at GSK and bring more cell and gene therapies to patients in the future. One of the key questions that come up quite regularly when talking about cell and gene therapy is how we make it more affordable and accessible to the patients that really need it because they can be quite pricey. The world's most expensive drug as we currently stand is a gene therapy product. So what's GSK's strategy when talking to uh, reimbursement agencies around the world in different markets to, to make that um, a reality for patients? Yeah, we have a very good engagement with payers and agencies around the world in terms of looking at how we can ensure access to these medicines for patients. But one of the key things that GSK is able to bring this is the scalability point. We are involved in this space, in the gene therapy space, heavily, but we want to be able to increase the capability to manufacture these medicines, increase the ability to deliver them to patients around the world. And as you look at increasing that scale and logistical, overcoming these logistical challenges, that can hopefully drive down the cost as well of these medicines in the long term. Right now we're at the beginning of this journey, so they are indeed quite high cost medicines but ultimately we'll be able to or we hope to look to, to, to drive down those costs and ensure affordability to patients. Cell and gene therapy products they're essentially living therapeutics so when you think about logistics compared with the traditional pharmaceutical products that GSK manufactures do you see a huge difference in the supply chain and things that you need to take into consideration for, for the manufacturing and delivery to patients? There absolutely are some key differences in supply chain and, and delivery for cell and gene therapy as opposed to other more traditional medicines like small molecules and biologics. So yeah, there are some, some key challenges to overcome looking at the supply chain, looking at the cold chain, looking at how you deliver the material from the patient to the manufacturing site and back to the patient. So forums like the International Society for Cell Therapy, where we're at today, are fantastic opportunities for us to work with all sorts of stakeholders from the, from the community and look at, all right, well, we see these challenges, how can we work together to overcome them? So can we speak to the tools and technology providers, the service providers, and see what tools they're able to offer us to overcome that challenge? And can we speak to the clinicians to understand 
or what's so unique about delivering a cell and gene therapy that we particularly need to, to tackle, what challenges we need to tackle then and there, and ultimately engage with the regulators to ensure that what we're working on and developing is in accordance with the, with the regulations around the world as well. So the ICT serves as a great forum for us to, to come together as a community and, and overcome these challenges. Well, Emily, thank you so much for being on the show today. And it's absolutely amazing to see a company like GSK taking a leadership position in gene therapy and cell therapy for rare diseases. Thank you very much. Thank you. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.